Choosing the best history database for secondary source journal articles. Research is a lot like shopping. You'll need to sift through lots of different options to decide which one is the best one for you. Let's think of the process of research like the process of shopping for shoes. It would be great if we could go to a store that was clearly laid out with all the different types of things in different sections and everything organized neatly on the shelf. But unfortunately, the fact that so much information is available online now means that that nicely organized store has become a big messy jumble. It's like shopping for shoes at a flea market with everything in big messy jumbled piles and very little organization. But what if I told you there was a store that only sold shoes and, in fact, had some really helpful ways to narrow down and find exactly what it is that you're looking for? That's probably going to make you a whole lot happier, right? So by now, you're probably sick of the shoe analogy. So let's start talking about the specifics of doing research. Let's talk about some of the different places where you could go and do your searching and talk about the pros and cons of each one. I'm going to talk about why you don't want to search Google, Google Scholar, the SFSU Libraries OneSearch, and why you do want to search the library databases. But why you don't want to search JSTOR, and you do want to search the history databases, including America History and Life, Historical Abstracts, International Medieval Bibliography, and Lané Philologique. If I do talk about something here that you're not familiar with, don't worry, because I will get to the most useful and most efficient resources. So let's talk about the types of information you're going to want to find. The most popular kinds of information in terms of text comes out in websites, including blogs and social media, news sources, magazine sources, trade and industry sources, which are the kinds of sources that you would look at if you worked in a particular industry, and scholarly sources. Now let's talk about the different ways you might go about searching information and what are the most effective ways to access specifically scholarly sources, which are the kinds of sources that you want to find for upper division and graduate courses. The first searching option to talk about is Google because Google tends to be the place that most of us think to start any kind of search for any kind of information because Google searches everything, doesn't it? But actually, Google primarily searches websites, but it also will, is able to find some news sources, some magazine sources, some trade and industry publications, and a few scholarly sources. But the bulk of the search results that you'll find searching through Google will be websites. Take a look at just how many search results come up on Google on the history of Chinese Americans and gender in San Francisco. Almost two million and there is no way to sort out the ones that you want, minus using Google's general sub-searches for things like news, video, and images. So what about Google Scholar? Google's specific search that claims to search for just scholarly materials. Google Scholar does include a whole lot more scholarly sources than Google, and a lot fewer of the other types of sources that you want. But it's not comprehensive, it doesn't include all the scholarly sources that are out there, and it can get confused. It can include some reputable looking, but not scholarly sources like trade and industry sources, websites, magazines, and newspapers. So you're missing out on a lot of options in Google Scholar and not really searching everything available. The other problem that Google Scholar has is that it's not good at filtering out different disciplines. In other words, you're trying to find research from the field of history. Google Scholar has no easy way to ignore articles from other disciplines like sociology or psychology or business or physics. So you'll often get a lot of search results, many of which are from disciplines that aren't terribly useful. So the reality of searching on Google Scholar is you're still going to get lots of search results and there's no useful ways to filter out just the sources in history. So what about using some of the library resources? Most SFSU students start doing research at the library using the OneSearch, our one-stop shop that lets you search all kinds of publications. OneSearch is an improvement over searching Google or Google Scholar because OneSearch searches primarily published information, including scholarly news, magazine, and trade and industry publications. It's not perfect, it does miss a few sources, but in general, it searches most of them. And one nice thing is there are easy ways to focus your OneSearch search results to only those sources that are scholarly. The downside is that once 
once you've focused your results within one search to only those sources that are scholarly. There's no easy way to focus in on just the history sources. If you try to focus your search to history, you will also find results from sociology and archaeology. So it means that you're still going to get some sources that you're not so interested in. So what's a better option? If using one search doesn't work, then what should we do? We want to use article databases, which you'll find on the library's website. There you'll be able to choose the subject area that you're researching, in our case history, and find a list of research databases that focus on history. The last thing we need to talk about is which of these databases will be the most useful one for you to use. Some of you will have used JSTOR before, so for those people who have, I want to talk about why JSTOR is probably not your best bet. The issue with searching JSTOR is that it's very selective about what it includes. JSTOR is primarily a historical archive of scholarly articles. It covers most disciplines, and there are easy ways to focus in your search to just one discipline, like history. The problem is that JSTOR only only includes important journals, about 10% of the journals published in history, and it's always missing the most recent few years worth of content. The best option is to search the history databases. These are comprehensive databases that essentially cover everything published in the field of history in scholarly journals. The only downside is that they subdivide history. So there's one database for U.S. history, a different one for non-U.S. history, a different one for medieval history, and a different one for ancient history. But the big advantage is that if you search one of these history databases, you are essentially searching everything that is out there in the field of history, in the scholarly publications that could possibly work for your talk. Two of them are pretty easy to remember. America History and Life, covering U.S. history, an international medieval bibliography covering medieval history. But if you're unsure which database to use, notice the subcategories. If you're doing a U.S. history topic, you can choose U.S. history secondary sources, and you'll see the most useful database is America History and Life. Choose world history, and you'll see historical abstracts, followed by International Medieval Bibliography. Historical Abstracts is the database that covers non-U.S. history back to the Renaissance. Finally, if you're doing Ancient History, you'll find L'Année Philologique listed there, as well as JSTOR, which is suggested for Ancient History just because it's a whole lot easier to search than L'Année Philologique. So you can use the subcategories to remind yourself which database to use, 